Hello, everyone. Welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective. It's Monday night, so it's Mindful Mondays, Spiritual Friends Sangha, and my name is Augusta Hopkins, and I'm really glad to be able to practice with you together. The path of practice is, is so deep, and it's maintained by those of us who are moving through it. whatever our mode of ambulation might be, right? That's how the path is maintained. It was recently likened to a path in the forest, right? The path in the forest is maintained by those who journey along it. And if the journey stops, the path just <laughs> it goes bye-bye, right? That, that's just what happens. And here we are maintaining it together. So to, to value and lift up and appreciate that you are engaging in this path of practice and the value of that to yourself and to the broader community, whatever that might look like for you. You know, there's no way to do it. No particular way to do it. So I invite you to tune into your body in whatever way that's available to you. For many of us, a little bit of movement helps, helps us to feel into our bodies. Some of us don't dig on the movement so much. Like, so whatever works for you, Finding what can support you or allow you to rest into your body. And so maybe that means that you're walking around or you're standing up or you're lying down or you're sitting just as you are, or maybe you want to adjust your posture in some way. Some of us are supported by practicing with our eyes open if that's the case for you, I invite you to find something to gaze upon. A candle. A candle can be nice. We are supported by gazing on a candle or a blank wall or a leaf or a blossom. Something that is stabilizing. Nourishing. something that can support the settling of the heart, mind, and body. So whatever your posture might be in stillness or in movement, finding it and arriving there intentionally, coming home, to yourself in the present moment. Just as you are. And if you are practicing a posture of stillness, it can be very nice in the beginning to make any adjustments to help you find greater comfort and ease. Hips above the knees is really helpful in any seated posture. A long spine with the head resting atop the spine can bring ease into the body. The crown of the head, extend it up to the sky or out if you're lying down. The chin tucked ever so gently so that we might feel length through the back body, through the back of the neck. Opening. And the shoulders broadening. the pelvis rooting down, the sit bones making contact with the cushion or chair. And feeling the legs or the feet rooted, connected to this earth, our home.
And then inevitably, while we're practicing in stillness, some little discomfort will arise. I invite you to explore attending to that discomfort, whether it's an itch or something like that, with your kind attention, embracing it, allowing it to express itself, and noticing what happens if you don't do anything. And if it's a discomfort in the back or the neck or the knee or something like that. Observe it arising and passing a couple of times. And then if it comes back a third time, then with kind attention, change your posture. Care for yourself. And so it's a balance of not too little and not too much. If we move around in response to every discomfort, we never get the opportunity to actually settle. And if we sit through excruciating pain, we can't settle either. We might be harming ourselves, so we find a balance. I'm practicing with a shoulder injury myself, so I'll be making some adjustments here and there so that there can be ease in my shoulder while I continue to support stillness and settling in my body. Well, finding your way. There's no way to do this right. There's no doing and there's no right. It's a revealing and an exploration. When I invite you for this evening to explore preferencing, resting, settling, Ease. Beginning, of course, by finding, discovering the posture that's most supportive for those qualities. And as we attune into stillness together, noticing how it feels in the body to stop. To rest. To begin to have some freedom from doing. Resting.
open it. Allowing Noticing how it feels in the body to simply be. Free from an agenda. We are cultivating our ability to meet or be present to each moment as it's unfolding, just as it is. Noticing what we are aware of. Perhaps we're aware of thoughts in the mind. The sensations of the body settling. some discomfort or ease in the body. A sound or some other external experience. Noticing what we are aware of. and that we are aware. Simply observing. Noticing the ebb and flow. The range of experiences that arise and pass in the field of awareness.
Noticing what you are aware of and that you are aware. Noticing. Perhaps there is an experience of settling in the body. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't really matter what you are aware of, but rather that you are aware. So you might be noticing a settling, or maybe you're noticing more of a bubbling, bing, 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 bouncing around. The practice is the noticing. We're cultivating awareness, presence. Receptivity, receptivity. Ah, it's like this. I got you, we might say to ourselves. Or this too, no part left out. welcoming the fullness of our experience. That which is pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral, it all belongs. What are you aware of? Are you aware? Are you aware that you are aware? Not to get in a tangle, letting the words go if they're agitating, just resting. Coming home to ourselves. Just as we are.
so aware. And perhaps exploring your relationship to that which you are aware of, beginning to cultivate awareness of the relationship. Is there a little bit of liking or disliking, a subtle or not so subtle greed or aversion? A little chasing after or wanting to possess or pushing away, not wanting to have that be a part of us or kind of checked out spaciness. It's all okay. Can we notice it? Oh, this is what it feels like in this moment. This is what aversion or greed or delusion feels like in this moment. Can we be okay with that? Can that be okay? For when we are able to feel like that's okay, like whatever is here is okay, that's a moment of bliss. That's a moment of complete freedom. It all just unfolds on its own. If there's any doing at all, the doing I would encourage is to rest. Or when the body is truly at rest, mindfulness, awareness arises quite naturally on its own. You don't have to do it. Allowing the body to be.
So where? Befriending, befriending the moment, befriending yourself, befriending the direct experience that's arising and passing internally, externally, moment after moment. No part left out. Mm, I can be with this too. I can meet this too, the joy, the sorrow, the myriad experiences of life. Hi, I got you. I'm here for you, learning to be our own best friend, learning to be available for ourselves, to ourselves, reliable. With practice over time, this is a natural unfolding of the path. No doing involved. Just resting, receiving, opening to the unfolding of experience. I'm learning to be your own guide, learning to access and trust your own inner wisdom. Tuning in and discerning for ourselves, what do you need right now? How can I care for you in this moment? How can I be kind to myself in this moment? Asking the question and then opening and receiving, listening to the answer. Mm. 
and then acting from that place of wisdom. Slowly but slowly we find we're able to be worthy of our own care and attention that we've always been worthy of, but we come to show ourselves that we're worthy of it. We're responding with kind action to our own needs. We become respondable or responsible When we're responding rather than reacting, not caught, but free. This is my wish for you and for me. We rest and we open and we receive. No parts left out. Continuing to rest in receptivity. If the body is comfortable enough staying in the posture that you're in, if the body would be supported by some movement, inviting in some movement, can we be receptive, awake and alert? Whatever we might be doing, continuing in stillness or bringing in some movement. From this place of receptivity, I'd like to offer some words of the awakened one, the one we call Buddha. Noticing how it feels in the body and the heart as you receive these words, really practicing to continue the practice, whether drinking a glass of water or changing something in your technology, like it's all, it's all practice. All that we do, all that we engage in can be, in, can be engaged in with awareness. Nothing has to be outside of the field of practice. So awareness while listening. These words were compiled by Bhante Gunaratna. This is a meditation on death, Marana Sati. Just notice in the body, right? Remembering. Receptivity, touching ease, maybe remembering, oh, I have a body. Soft, open. Like a flame blown out by the wind, this life continuum goes to destruction. Recognizing one's similarity to others, 
one should develop mindfulness of death. Just as people who have achieved great success in the world have died, so too, I must certainly die. Death is harassing me. Death always comes along together with birth, searching for an opportunity, like a murderer out to kill. What's happening in the body? What's happening in the hearts? Some stories showing up in the mind. Can we hold it all in the field of awareness? Not the least bit stoppable. Always going forward. Life rushes toward its end. Like the rising sun to its setting. Like lightning, a bubble, dew drops, or a line drawn in the water. Not the least bit stoppable. Death is like a murderer after its foe, completely unrestrainable. Death slays those great in glory, in strength, merit, powers, and wisdom. And even the two kinds of conquerors, no need to speak about one like me. Due to a lack of the supports of life or to some inner or outer misfortune, I who am dying moment after moment can die in the blink of an eye. The life of mortals is signless. Its length cannot be known in advance. It is difficult and limited and tied up with suffering. There is no possibility that mortals shall not die. Having reached old age, they die. Such is the nature of living beings. As fruit, when ripe, has to fall. So all beings live constantly in the fear that they will die. How's the body? How's the heart? What's the mind doing? It's all okay. Just noticing. Remembering to notice. Key to practice. As a potter's earthen jars eventually must all break up, so too does the life of mortals eventually come to an end. The young and the old, the foolish and the wise, all move in the grip of death, all finally end in death. Impermanent are all conditioned things, subject to arising and falling away. Having arisen, they then must cease. Blissful is it when they subside. Before long, this body will lie cast away upon on the ground, bereft of all consciousness, like a useless block of wood. Uninvited, she came here. Without leave, she departed. She went just as she came. So why lament? Noticing how it feels in there, in the body, art, mind. In this ever-changing flow of experience we call ourselves.
continuing practicing being aware. I'm going to talk a bit more. So being aware in whatever form supports you. I think many teachers in many styles and approaches are trying to support us to be aware in all activity. And they find different ways to do that. And some of them will be more resonant for us at different times. And none of it is right or wrong or better or worse. It's just how it lands. Because we're always changing. Constantly changing. And so what's resonant at one moment might not be so resonant at another moment. Or what's not resonant at one moment might be more resonant in another moment. Like, it's all changing. We're all changing. I don't think I had the opportunity to hear Thich Nhat Hanh say this directly himself, but I've thought it so many times and I, I've heard it and I've read it that Tai used to tell a story of some people that he was marrying or that he, he had married, which is kind of, I know that's a little bit outside of my understanding because most monastics, and I know Plum Village of Monastics, like, we don't marry anyone, like that's outside of our realms, like who knows? But that's how the story came down to me. And these wise people, the next day after the exchange wedding vows, there was a conversation that resulted in, I'm not the same person and I'm not a different person. You know, the person that got married yesterday or the person that got to brush their teeth today or didn't brush their teeth. Like right now, we're both not the same person and not a different person. We're constantly changing. So is everyone else that we're interacting with. Right, but we get confused or we get stuck. So like the getting confused and stuck is an aside. But I want to name this constant flow of process and that we can attune to that when we remember. And I, for me, I'm finding this practice of cultivating rest, ease, relaxation, and allowing that to open to mindfulness rather than actively cultivating mindfulness. I'm finding this to have so much more ease and greater possibility of continuity. So there's more moments of mindfulness arising. And I know that all the teachings I received before this from Thich Nhat Hanh and from his students, lay and monastic, and from lay monastic students of Ajahn Chah, that it's all laid the foundation for this. I don't think this is actually outside of that, but this language is different. This language of resting, opening, receiving. And for me, for this amalgamation that we call Augusta Hopkins in this moment in time, this approach is allowing the Dharma, the Dharma to open and unfold more visibly, more clearly, more perceptibly. As I practice opening, resting, softening, receiving. But even when I give all that spring of words, then it becomes a doing. So without the doing part, right? It's like, it's this balance because all I have is words. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's this all body here that's talking, but it becomes a doing so easily because of this Western, I think anyway, Western model, maybe it's bigger than just the Western model.
but we can touch, we can touch a being, a resting and opening or receiving in moments. These moments just keep arising. And some of you know in Plum Village, we have bells that help call us home to ourselves. And that can be great. And this new thing that's happening inside of me where like mindfulness just like comes back online, boom. I find it has much greater staying power than you know, having church bells or a siren or the sound of the J calling me home to the present has a different potency for me right now. And so now when I hear the J, so go, oh, hi, there's the J, it's sound arising and passing. And I tune in rather than listening, like going out there and listening to the sound arising, sustaining for a while and then passing away, which I've done for years. I tune in and notice how it feels in the body. And then as I continue on with whatever I was doing or whatever is next, there's a natural way that that attunement to how it feels in the body can continue. And then it comes back again later on its own without the sound of the J or another external experience. And sometimes something catches my attention. I've been noticing it particularly for myself anyway, with shadows or reflections, like they catch my attention. And I, I feel that like, oh, that's mindfulness arising. Like that's a moment of mindfulness. There's full, complete attention and presence and like everything's together in that moment. And I tune into that rather than, sometimes I'm still going back out to the shadow or the reflection, but more and more it's like, oh, hi. I was coming home to myself in the moment. And the more that that's happening for me, the more ability there is to be present to the constriction or the ease and the heart, the greed or the pushing away, or the, oh, everything's fine. Like for real, everything's fine. Or some story in the mind that I can recognize as a story in the mind so that it's not that I'm believing it and caught and then like getting some space, but like, oh, yeah, just a story in the mind. What? Just a story in the mind? Like that's freedom. So I'll be continuing to practice in this way and continuing to offer this and it will unfold or make sense or not make sense as it goes. And maybe my skill in teaching it will continue to expand. Like who knows, <laughs> who knows? Um, but I'm glad you're on the ride with me. Having friends on the path is, you know, it's part of the path. It's how we can journey it. We can't journey it alone, it turns out. And we need Sangha or Kalyanavita. It's There are three gems, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha on equal footing, you know, such as the Buddha Dhamma. And the potential for awakening that the Buddha offers us is real and beautiful. Thank you. And the Dhamma, the teachings that he expounded, so supportive and such a gift to read, read some words of the Dhamma today and to be in Sangha offering them. So thank you for your presence. And I offered those words this evening, the Marana Sati from Bhattagunaratna. Hmm. Because on Wednesday, I am flying to Philadelphia to host my mother's memorial on Saturday. And my intention is to read that. We'll see what actually happens. I'm giving myself complete freedom to have it unfold however it unfolds. But this is a reading that I have practiced with over the years. I think I, I first practiced with Bhante Gunarana in 2013. So I've had this, this offering of the Dhamma since then, so 11 years now. And some friends and teachers of mine read this out loud for me on the three month anniversary of my mother's death while I was at Spirit Rock for the February month long. And it was amazing. We were standing over a bridge, over a stream. And I don't know if you remember San Francisco in February, but we got a lot of rain in the Bay. 
and the river was flowing. It was so strong, churning and churning and churning. And in the churn, these bubbles would show up floating on the surface of the water. They would stay for a while, then they would pop. And so as I was watching those bubbles over the weeks, my mom died on the 23rd and I was at Spirit Rock for the whole month of February. So I'd been there more than three weeks when the 23rd came. So I've been watching these bubbles on the river you know, for a long time. It's really a creek, but we call them rivers in California. Very interesting to me, having grown up on the East Coast. I don't know if anyone knows what the, the Delaware River looks like, but the Delaware River is huge compared to any river I've seen in California. <laughs> It's just gigantic. But anyway, I digress. This little tiny river that I was loving at Spirit Rock, we stood over the river and Andrea Fella and Tara Moulet and Devin Berry read pages of Marana Sati and we watched the river and I felt my mom there with us and it was very nourishing for me. And I read this, Marana Sati, when my my fairy godmother, I had, um, my when my parents had raided, we lived with friends of my mom and <sighs> Sam Morse, the Sam Morse and Marie Heenan. And Sam Morse, she she was my fairy godmother. She, <laughs> she was a butch dyke and she loved like being fairy. <laughs> she was so silly. She like put on this, falsetto and she was fucking hilarious and when sam died her wife because maria had died earlier her then wife eileen asked me to be an officiant at the services and so i read marana sati and it was so grounding and supportive for me and for the others who had gathered and so i feel hopeful that i'll be able to offer that on my mom's memorial on, on saturday and it really helped me back on February 23rd. So that's why I read that tonight. And I, I hope that it was supportive for you. And if it was activated in any way, we have space to, to care for that as well. And it's true. Everything's fucking changing all the time. It's all changing all the time for better and for worse. I said, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. And I love the imagery of a line drawn in the water, of lightning, a dewdrop, a bubble. It's so evocative for me, right? That's why a few weeks ago when I taught on Anicca, I brought in bubbles and I blew bubbles so we could feel them. We could feel the impermanence and the delight and the like, eh, it's just a bubble, right? We can have thought bubbles or heart bubbles or body bubbles, like, it's all temporary. And the shoulder has been so, like, I knew impermanence when I had the shoulder injury, you know, I had the bike accident. And it's held me through it so beautifully. And my shoulder has healed so much since then. Like, it's not 100% yet, but it's getting closer and closer every day. Right? Nothing is fixed. Nothing is fixed. And we can appreciate that. I remember once my mother and I practiced martial arts together and we had come home from training and something was going on at the studio um, that we weren't particularly fond of. And I was a teenager, was living at home with her. I can vividly remember sitting in the car with her and she said to me, she said, it's gonna change. She's like, you know, if you like it, enjoy it, because it's going to change. And if you don't like it, don't worry about it too much, because it's going to change. It's like my first Dharma teaching. And some people would say, like, that's not Dharma, because there's like they enjoy it in there. But whatever. It's Dharma. It's the Dharma of Kathy Hopkins. And it was supportive for me. And I forget sometimes for sure. You know, we're not supposed to remember all the time. But we have moments of remembering. Sati can be translated as remembering, often mindfulness or awareness, as I was offering this evening, but we remember. And can you remember to tune into your body in whatever posture it might be in? No need to change anything. Just to bring attention inward for a moment and notice this body being. Being here as you're listening. Being here as, as you're talking, if you're me. You know, being here as I'm talking, if you're you. 
and noticing how the heart, mind, and body respond to the hearing, to the speaking, to the contraction, to the ease, to the oh yeah, or the oh no. That's all nature, all of it. That's all how it's come to be, yata bhuta, things as they have come to be, yata bhuta. How is it in there? Can you touch into your direct experience in this moment, your internal? Can you invite the body to soften even in the midst of listening or in the midst of whatever might be going on inside of your heart mind? Can there be some allowing, allowing this too? The judgment, the joy, the confusion, the anger, the grief. It's nature. And we can greet it all. Thank you for your kind attention. You'll all be with me in my heart on Saturday. Thank you for your practice and for your presence. It means a lot to me.